right, guys. Thank you guys for joining me today. I can't get my microphone slot on my phone to work, so we're just going to go at this this way. Hopefully, it'll still work good, guys, and you can hear me good. We're going to be in Luke chapter 13 today, guys. Thank you so much for letting me share God's Word with you guys. He is so amazing. Let's get into it. Hold on one second. All right. Let's get into it, guys. Father God, I want to come before you today, Lord. I want to say thank you, Father God, for waking me up, for, for giving me this life, Lord. I find myself so stumped for the things to say to you in gratitude, God, because what you have given me is so beyond words. It's beyond description. It's more than I could have ever imagined or hoped for, God. You've given me such calmness and and joy and purpose and hunger. Oh, I want to share it with everybody, God. Help me to do that. Help these videos to reach out and to touch an audience and to, to pull them in that we can that we can learn to know you better and to appreciate you more and to make you more proud with our lives to live lives that are a, a sweet smelling aroma a sacrifice to you that's worthwhile to live life in service to you and by chance in service to others lord that that they could see what you have done in our lives lord in your heavenly name i pray guys god is so good let's jump into luke 13 y'all I know the camera's kind of high today. It's, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Thank you guys for sharing with, or for letting me share with you. <clears throat> there were present at that season some who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered and said to them, Do you suppose that these Galileans were worse sinners than all other Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Or those 18, on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse sinners than all other men who dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you no. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. He also spoke this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. Then he said to the keeper of his vineyard, Look, for three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why does it use up the ground? But he answered and said to him, Sir, let it alone this year also until I dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit, well... But if not, after that, you can cut it down. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity eighteen years, and was bent over, and could in no way raise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. But the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. And he said to the crowd, There are six days on which men ought to work. Therefore, come and be healed on them, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Hypocrite, does not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his donkey or ox from the stall and lead it away to water it? So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, think of it, for eighteen years, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath? And when he said these things, all his adversaries were put to shame, and all the multitude rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. Then he said, What is the kingdom of God like, and to what shall I compare it? It is like a mustard seed, which a man took and put in his garden, and it grew and became a large tree, and the birds of the air nested in its branches. And again he said, To what shall I liken the kingdom of God? It is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till it was all leavened. 
And he went through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying towards Jerusalem. Then one said to him, Lord, are there few who are saved? And he said to them, Strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I say to you, will seek to enter and will not be able. When once the master of the house has risen up and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open for us. And he will answer and say to you, I do not know you, where you are from. Then he will say, I tell you, I do not know you, where you are from. Or, I'm sorry, I do not know you, where you are from. Verse 26. Then you will begin to say, We ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know you, where you are from. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. There will be weeping and gnashing of the teeth when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and yourselves thrust out. They will come from the east and the west, from the north and the south, and set down in the kingdom of God. And indeed, there are last who will be first, and there are first who will be last. Beautiful words from Jesus. Man, he really did, guys. He really came to just everything people thought they knew and believed and just all of it. Man, he came to shake us up, to wake us up and to shake us up and to just, man, he really makes us use our noodles, guys. That's what these parables are about. It's about using, using the Holy Spirit within us, using prayer using our noodle, using God's word, all of it put together to be able to really pull these parables apart and get what we need to out of them. All right, guys, so getting into chapter 13 of Luke, we get some more instruction from the Lord, a few parables, and Christ, like John the Baptist, hits on the need for repentance. 13.1, guys. Thank y'all for letting me share with you. There were present at that season some who told him about the Galileans whose blood... Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. So, the way that's worded, it might not be clear to everybody, but what that's talking about is that Pilate had killed a group of people in the act of worship. And this is clearly a grave, evil, and vile offense. And now this event is only recorded here in Luke. And so some have opposed its veracity. But, setting it aside, many, many secular and religious first century historians have recorded other disturbing and similar acts of cruelty and violence perpetrated by Pilate. So there's little reason to doubt what Luke has recorded. 13, 2 through 5. And Jesus answered and said to them, do you suppose that these Galileans were worse sinners than all other Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Or those eighteen on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse sinners than all other men who dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. At the time, it was a wide-held and prevalent belief that severe troubles, calamities, woes, they came upon those deserving of God's wrath. And I put in parentheses here that worth noting is how, through circular reasoning, this thought process implies that those not dealing with such calamity and trouble, they must be living righteously, right? Also not so. Quickly and with sureness, the Lord repudiates all of this. See, Galileans and those crushed by the falling Siloam Tower had no time to repent before dying, and other unrepentant people placed themselves and their souls in the same precarious situation by not coming to the Lord now. All too often, death is swift and unknown to its victims, and so the frailty and fragility of life lived in a fallen and darkened world should push everyone to take stock of their spiritual existence and make themselves 
ready now. Now's the time, guys. Not later. 13, 10 through 13. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and could in no way raise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. All right, y'all. So, for the very last time in Luke's gospel, he records the Messiah teaching in a synagogue on the Sabbath. With the Lord's deity in mind, he was clearly aware of the particular Jews and their ban against healing on the Sabbath. And so, the Lord freed this woman from this crushing condition nonetheless. In, in fact, diving in to the grammatical makeup of these verses where it says loosed, talking about he loosed her from this infirmity, the word is penned in what's known as the perfect tense using the passive voice. And what all of that means, what all of that means is that Jesus freed her from this condition so completely that it would never again burden her. And we can see from the way she was, it was likely some sort of an arthritic condition. And so, beautiful guys, 13, 14. But the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, and he said to the crowd, There are six days on which men ought to work. Therefore come and be healed on them, and not on the Sabbath day. <sighs> These guys were unbelievable, weren't they? So anyways, I had titled this yet again, Doing a New Thing, because that really is, man, that's what it was all about with Jesus. He came to really shake things up. The woman's, come and be healed on them. That's what this person says. Come and be healed on those days. The woman's condition has afflicted her 18 years, and so clearly it is not a life-threatening disease or illness, and her release could be postponed to a more opportune time. That said, that said, the Lord rightly contends that freeing one from bondage Fits the Lord's day like a glove, y'all. Like a glove. It's exactly what it was purposed for. 13.22 And he went through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. So, here we see Jesus, in my mind, truly practicing what he preached. See, Jesus has which he always did, obviously, but this is a particular example of it. Jesus has a lot to do, and his time on earth was drawing to a close. Nonetheless, Luke records a steady, unhurried travel towards Jerusalem and the long-planned climax that is on the way to this most precious of dates. The Lord continues to serve those in need. All right, guys, 13.28. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and yourselves thrust out. And he's not goading them. He's saying, wake up, guys. Get with me on this. An eye-opening and powerful depiction. We see grief-fueled tears and angry gnashing teeth in response to seeing the patriarchs and prophets a source of pride for Israelites and a group that they identified with heavily as theirs. And when they see them enjoying the wonders of God's kingdom while they themselves are rejected, we can only imagine how this cut them and hopefully led to repentance. 1332, guys. And he said to them, Go tell that fox, Behold, I cast out demons and perform cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfected. 
All right, so Jews often use the metaphor of a fox to imply slyness and a lack of worth. Christ is not moved by Herod's threats. He will push on with his divine ministry. Here, the reference to the third day highlights how Christ's time on earth is drawing to a close, and it's a bit of an inkling and a foretelling of what's to come. 1333, guys, last one I'm going to share with you. Nevertheless, I must journey today, tomorrow, and the day following. For it cannot be that a prophet should perish outside of Jerusalem. So I want to talk about that very beginning part. Nevertheless, I must journey. Divine necessity pushes Christ forward. This is the Father's will and the Son will bring it to bear. Sin, death, and the workers of evil must be put on notice. Their attacks on humanity will not go unchecked, and the word must makes it clear that this will all go down exactly when, how, and where our loving Creator God wills. All right, guys. Amen, amen, amen. If you're not subscribed, smash the subscribe button. Drop a new video like this six days a week, guys, and I promise he wants us to... He wants us to walk in his word and read it and live it and breathe it and need it and eat it and be filled with it. Dip that scroll in honey and eat it every day, guys. That's what he wants us to do. So, um, look, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you loved it, share it. My heart goes out to you. Um, if you have any prayer requests, any comments, guys, drop that down here into the comment section. And whatever you do, I love you. God loves you so much more, man. Go out there and have a blessed day, y'all.